Hi, this is Chris, and this is a little video about my Premier Radio. Since I got so many positive comments and likes on it, I wanted to make a video about it. Um, I'm finding not much about Premier. I found them in the LA City Directory from 1927 to 1929, and their address was on the third floor of a bank building in a commercial part of downtown LA, which makes me wonder if this was either a really small company working out of an office building, or if that was just their management and they had a factory somewhere in town and kept a very low profile. I don't think this set has any relationship to the Premier Radio from Defiance, Ohio. Although they use the same mahogany Bakelite front panel, I don't see other details that really match. Um, I've only found two other Los Angeles Premier sets. One was a console on RadioLaGuy.com and the other one is on Radio Museum and I've reached out to the owner and I'm waiting to hear back from him. Um, let's see. Cosmetically, it's got the cool mahogany Bakelite dial, kilograd verniers, and composition knobs for the potentiometer and rheostat. Electronically, it's just a very conventional five tube TRF, uh, one filament rheostat, and one potentiometer controlling RF grid bias. Here's the set internally, um, electronically very conventional. The grid leak is under the bed plate. The three RF coils are all plug-in, which is kind of neat. Um, it has a battery cable for A and B, no C battery provision on this set, and then binding posts for antenna and ground. The transformers were replaced before I got it, and the other set I saw on Radio Museum has a Crescent brand audio transformer for the first stage and a Thordarson for the second. I'll keep my eyes open, and if they show up, I'll probably swap them out. Um, interestingly, I think these are also Crescent brand RF transformers, but it's kind of hard to tell. They're very faded. Here's the underside, and I thought that this was like a 1925-ish radio at first, but I found an ad from Benjamin for these little brackets, which they were selling to set builders from late 1926, so this very well might be a 1927 radio made with retrograde technology. Um, what strikes me about the underside is this Bakelite kind of sub-panel. It's rather crudely cut, um, no spaghetti at all, and there are a lot of connections that were just screwed together but not soldered. And the more I look at this radio, the more I wonder if this was just a really small time company that wanted to be a radio company, but did not want to make the investment to wind their own coils, and they were a little reluctant to learn how to solder. Oh, and of course, uh, when I got this, it did play, but it was really intermittent, crazy volume weirdness, and it would go into oscillation whenever you blinked. This connection had about one turn left on it before the nut was going to fall off altogether. And of course, that was my first RF stage. Why is it always the simple thing that you never notice? So let's hear it play. Now, even for a 1920s TRF set, this one is a little touchier than average for oscillation. And oddly enough, it's happier at the high end of the dial than the low, which is a little odd from my experience. But here goes. KNX 1070 Los Angeles. Visit BobSmithBMW.com or call us at 800 BobSmith. New Year? What do you think Guy in his ear. There can't be any fresh original programming anytime soon. This would be, we'd be approaching what they call the upfront season right now. 1090.
1480 a.m. But then the other end is not as sensitive. I live in the greater LA region, which means that you should be able to get KFI 640 on a pair of dentures practically. And this one struggles to get it in. That's about it. Um, I can cover the bottom of the AM band till at least somewhere around 1500 kilocycles. Sometimes it can separate within 20 kilocycles, sometimes not, but the band around here is kind of awful. Um, it oscillates when it wants to, but hey, it works. Um, I keep getting a feeling that Premier was a company that wanted to make a pretty radio that was relatively easy to use, that was being sold to people who wanted a radio as an appliance, not really to a DXer or to a big radio person. Um, it would have been nice if they had provision for a C battery and a power audio stage. It would have been nice if they added a headphone jack. But I kind of feel that this was just a set built by a local company for local people who wanted to pick up local stations and it looked nice in the parlor. Anyway, there's my radio. Thanks for watching.